best girl's a corker, not the kind that's slow. Born and bred New Yorker, I would have you know. You can talk about your mollies, your mamies, or your pearls. There's none of them that's with it. This is Al Goldstein for Midnight Blue. Usually we have porno actors, actresses, people who suck cock, women who could take on four dicks uh, or 87 bozos in one afternoon. Today we have, a, relatively speaking, the classy afternoon. We have a, a sort of legendary musical figure from the 60s uh, who broke through with a tremendous publicity uh, gallop, Tiny Tim. Tiny, uh, it's a rather uh, uh, odd meeting. We almost have to quit meeting like this. You're considered to be a uh, tasteful, very religious person. So the first question is, why are you here with me on Midnight Blue? Well, first of all, Mr. Goldstein, it's a pleasure being on your show. Thank you, Tiny. And, well, first of all, I was asked. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, I'm the biggest sinner in the world. Really good. And when I say this, I don't say it just for false modesty. I mean it. And the good Lord, you know, my mother was Jewish, my father was Catholic. I just believe in Jesus Christ as the answer to life. Uh, and I believe that the world, there's hardly a, that everyone is full of error uh, in this world, whether you're uh, living in conservative suburbia or whether you're down in the village. From nature, in, since the fall of the Garden of Eden, man is, has been in error since that time. Uh, no matter what kind of suit or clothes or whatever you wear, the heart is evil. There are people who go to religious institutions every day and commit adulteries at night and decry those who, uh, you know, have papers or Playboy magazines and they say, get them off the air. They become judges. Uh, the world is full of error. And so it's a pleasure for me to be on this show as it was, it would be the Mr. Carson show. Have you ever masturbated? Uh, unfortunately, yes. And was it something that filled you with pleasure or shame? Uh, shame entirely. Uh, because I really believe this. I, I, I believe that um, uh, when that's happened, it, it still I felt bad because it's an act that was reserved only for marriage. I've asked the Lord for strength and never to do it again. And if I did it again, I would never, never stop until I quit. And uh, you, you never give up. The same with the diet. No matter, I used to be heavy and way heavier, and I'd never stop. I'd say, never again. And then I had a big pizza meal. But I said, I'd never stop saying never as long as I keep knocking positive thinking in and never quit until you overcome yourself and get onto that diet. And the same thing when I did those uh, things with myself, uh, I never said it was right. I still believe it was wrong, except that I was weak and tempted. And I just asked the Lord for strength to overcome these things. And he gave it to me. Do, are you, do you have any recollection of what a woman tastes like? Uh, no, I really don't. Because um, most of the time it was covered with honey or peanut butter. That's getting me hungry, that part. Uh, and so the honey and peanut butter was just, you know, covering whatever taste there might be. Uh, so I can't say that I've had any taste. Um, but, you know, I was only concerned of giving her pleasure. And once that three hour limit was up, if she wanted to do the same, fine. If not, well, it was fine, it okay with me. Uh, it didn't bother if it never happened to me. I've always told them, I don't want you to touch me uh, when the night first began. I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to disturb me because I don't want to be, I don't want to release myself because uh, I'm only here to give you pleasure for at least three hours because once I was released, I'd be as weak as water. Okay. And then I, that she said, all right, this is one example of one girl. And then um, I would first start not only by undressing her slowly, but also of, of smoothing her body with baby lotion, a baby lotion or some body cream before the shower. Uh, and then, of course, it would be washed off again in the shower. Now, as I was aroused, uh, I still told her, don't touch me whatever you do. Now, the, now, I had a clock there, so I would at least make sure it took at least three hours. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, after the shower was over and uh, we, you know, lie down on the bed at one time, 
uh, I was still aroused, and she was wondering what the heck was going on, because I was doing everything to her without penetration. You went down on her, in other words. Uh, either uh, That was afterwards, but during the shower, I was just massaging her in the shower all over, and with the knees uh, as well as the hands. Right. Uh, and also, um, after the shower, when we lied in, in bed, uh, I still told her not to touch me, and then I would take out the ukulele and then play a few numbers, and she was wondering what's going on. She was afraid you'd use the ukulele. <laughs> no, no. Uh, the closest I came to that was using drumsticks.